it's Kira and welcome to another weekly vlog. It is currently Thursday afternoon and I wish I could say to you happy Thursday but that would simply not be true because for me it has not been a happy Thursday. Now what I'm about to say may seem like kind of trivial but genuinely it has devastated me. So some of you might know I'm, I have talked previously about my TikTok obsession because I love TikTok, it's great. And one account that I have followed religiously and just love with all of my heart is called Pot Roast Mom. And that is a TikTok account run by a cat owner. The cat is called Pot Roast and the account is run by Pot Roast Mom. And Pot Roast is just this hilarious looking cat and the mum has the most wicked dark sense of humour and honestly it is just pure joy to watch because it's so weird but also so funny and there are nearly a million followers on that account so like a lot of people share that love of pot roast and pot roast mom and genuinely this account has brought me so much joy over the last few months but sadly pot roast got ill quite suddenly um, and this morning at 5 15 when i woke up to go to the gym i went on tiktok as i always do as i'm kind of waking up and saw the really really sad news oh god this is it i i can't cope saw the sad news that pot roast had passed away so um yeah that was that was tough i'm like really sad <laughs> It's ridiculous, obviously never met this cat, but I'm so sad, oh my god, what is wrong with me? Oh, wow, okay, so it kind of brought me back because obviously I am sad for the cat because obviously she was ill and it's terribly sad that she died, but what I'm most sad for is of course her owner who has now lost a pet and like last year some of you may know if you were following us back then um me and Jay we had two rabbits Gatsby and Willow and we now only have Gatsby because Willow last January so 2021 she got ill very suddenly and we did everything we could I spent a ridiculous amount of money at the vets on treatments and we were feeding her by syringe and all sorts it was like really really intense and we did everything that we could to try and get her better but she passed away really suddenly and honestly it seemed like just so devastating at the time because it's really sad to lose a pet so this morning was not a happy morning because of pot roast going but also just because I felt so bad and still do feel so bad for her owner so god wow I am an emotional wreck every time I go on TikTok and see a video from someone who like me was a follower of that page who's also devastated I just start crying again it's just so sad and I am an emotional wreck so I just wanted to kind of put that out there just because I've talked about this account quite a few times and it means it meant a lot to me so yeah not a happy Thursday but Thursday all the same and um, I am trying to get back in a positive mind frame so I have got some happy things to share with you one of which has recently been delivered to me and I'm actually wearing it not the dungarees although I do love them but I'm gonna scooch back this little thing right here that you can see this koala pouch situation is actually a hot water bottle holder so inside here you might be able to hear the water jiggling around is a hot water bottle and it's a pouch and then it like straps around the back of you and then the front of it is like a hand pouch situation so you can warm your belly and also your hands at the same time and one of my colleagues at work shout out to Katie and um, showed me hers earlier this week so it was on Monday I ordered it immediately it arrived on Tuesday and I have been wearing it virtually non-stop ever since so that is definitely bringing me plenty of joy on this Thursday and then another thing that made me very happy was that I just received a lovely little postcard from my friend Hannah over in America so that was a really lovely thing to receive on Thursday as well so there we have it an emotional start to a weekly vlog but I felt like pot roast deserved the eulogy because she was an iconic cat and will live on forever in the form of her TikTok so sad today but really 
it's wonderful because there's so many great memories of that cat and we love her so pot roast supremacy over here let's get on with the rest of the vlog so I like to start these vlogs of course with my tea taste test but today's tea taste test isn't actually about tea it's about the plant-based milk that I'm going to be using in the tea so without further ado let me get it because it's something quite special You may know that I typically am an oat milk user. I think oat milk is the most wonderful plant-based milk out there. However, I saw on Instagram the other day, something even wilder had been created, and it was this. Doug, potato milk. Now, I am of Irish heritage. My mum is from Ireland, and I, I go hard on potatoes. Potatoes in every form I love. And so when I saw potato milk, I thought, I have to try it. Like, I have to try it because it's so bizarre and interesting. Now, when I bought this from Waitrose, I saw that potatoes actually only make up 9% of the ingredient list, and the rest is kind of like, thickeners, proteins, uh, oils, leptins, all those kinds of things. So wouldn't say it's like the healthiest plant-based milk. It certainly does not have very like simple ingredients. There's a lot that's gone into this milk, but I was excited to try it nonetheless. So I thought before we could put it in a tea, I would first try it just straight because I want to see what the milk is actually like on its own. So without further ado, Okay. Doesn't really have a particularly strong smell. Okay. Cheers. It's very, very, very creamy. It doesn't taste like potatoes. There is like a bit of a starchy undertone, which I suppose you would expect given that potato is one of the main ingredients, but it doesn't taste super potatoey. What it does taste is quite artificially sweet. There's definitely some sweetness thrown in there and it doesn't taste like a very like, um, I usually go for like unsweetened plant-based milks because I find sweetened ones just like kind of get in the way of the flavor of whatever you're adding them to. Whereas the ones that are unsweetened taste a bit more refreshing and a bit more like normal milk. So not bad at all, like it's not disgusting, but it's also not something that I would drink on its own. However, we're going to try it in a tea and see what we make of that, so let's go for it. a standard tea here basically the tea that I drink most often which is Yorkshire tea so that I've got like a level playing field for comparing it to what it normally tastes like when I make it with oat milk so I went quite heavy on the amount of milk that I threw in this tea and um, partially just because I wasn't really paying attention and partially because I wanted to properly give it a chance to shine so without further ado let's try it in tea literally no different like it is like i said a very creamy milk i feel like the sweetness really stand out when you drink it straight on its own but actually in the tea it doesn't really taste overly sweetened or anything like that um i'd say like if you just put that in front of someone and said it was like soy milk or something but if you wouldn't really know the difference you definitely wouldn't pick this one out of a lineup and say that's potato milk if that makes sense i really don't think it tastes like potatoey hmm. Yeah, very, very drinkable, which is good because it was fairly expensive, so I'm glad it doesn't have to go to waste and I can drink the rest of it in tea without fear. So there is my potato milk review. Would I recommend it? Probably not because like I said, it's got a lot of ingredients in it and it doesn't stand out particularly from other plant-based milks. So if you already have a favorite, then probably just stick with that. But if you wanna try it just for the fun of being able to say you've tried potato milk, then in that case, 
I say go for it because it's really not that bad at all. So that is my <laughs> sad life updates, tea drunk, and now on to reading updates. So last week I read The Christmas Bookshop by Jenny Colgan and I didn't really like it. And I have found recently that I am in a habit of if I don't like a book or I'm not loving the book that I'm reading, my vlog kind of flops because I just don't feel excited to talk about the book. So last week's vlog kind of just went down the pan, hence why you didn't really see me finish reading The Christmas Bookshop because I just ended up falling out of love with it. I gave it three stars. It wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but I didn't love it. I didn't love the characters and it just didn't have the warmth and wholesome vibes that I was expecting from a Jenny Colgan book. So I decided to go for something a little bit different, a little bit like out of the norm of my usual reading. And I have picked up Someday, Someday Maybe by Lauren Graham, which obviously is uh, Lorelai Gilmore for anyone that doesn't know this is her and she wrote this book quite a few years ago now but I am a big fan of Gilmore Girls as we know and Lauren Graham is an icon I have already listened to her memoir audiobook which is talking as best as I can and that is all about kind of like her life story her journey of becoming an actress and like the struggle to kind of get to where she was at the point of being in Gilmore Girls and yeah it's just like it was a really really fun audiobook and I would definitely recommend listening to rather than reading it physically because you really get her personality through the audiobook narration. However, this book is a fiction and I was very excited to go into it because whilst it is technically a fiction, it also feels somewhat autobiographical because as I mentioned, the memoir is all about her journey of becoming an actress and this book is all about that as well. So the main character is called Franny. Yeah, she's called Franny, um, named after the main character or one of the main characters from J.D. Salinger just Franny and Zoe. Um, and Franny is a struggling young actress in New York City in the mid 90s, trying to make it, but really struggling to get anything other than like adverts and commercials. And it feels like there's definitely some semblance, I'm assuming, of Lauren's own life story in this. So it's gonna be really fun. Um, I'm currently, let's see. 104 pages into this book and what I've read so far I've really enjoyed. I think the setting is like got an air of nostalgia about it. It feels like a little bit gritty and relatable in the sense of being at that early point of your career and trying to figure out what you want to do and how to achieve your dreams and like the struggle of like facing reality when things aren't going your way. So it has like an element of grit to it, but it is also just like lighthearted, funny, feels a bit diary-esque and I'm really enjoying it. So very, very glad to have picked this one up and so far to be enjoying it more than my last read. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything I've got to say to you. She says as though she hasn't just spoken for like 15 minutes straight. So if you stuck around for that intro, thank you very much. The rest of the vlog, who knows where it'll take us, but um, hopefully, Happy places is what we're, what we're going for this weekend. So thank you for being here. Um, and let's get on with the rest of our Thursday. I actually have the rest of my afternoon at work to get on with, so I'll catch up with you this evening. I am looking very blue today. It wasn't intentional, but that's the vibe we're going for apparently. Um, it is now Friday and Friday so far is looking like it's going to be a very busy day. Um, Jay and I miraculously both have the same day off today which feels like such a rare gem because it never happens. I mean Jay having a day off work in general is like a massive rarity because he has a full-time job and then he's also training as something else which takes up his other days. So he usually works seven day weeks meanwhile I get my lovely four day weeks and then a three day weekend. So we don't really often have time off together or we haven't for quite a while, but we do today, which is very exciting. So we've already been out and done a little bit of shopping this morning, went for a morning coffee, which was lovely. And then now that we've got home, we've kind of like had some lunch and then mobilized because we've got quite a busy afternoon. First thing on the agenda, not so exciting, but just one of those things that we need to get done is taking Gatsby to the vet. Though I feel I should say after the uh, emotions of yesterday's pet discussion, there is nothing wrong with Gatsby, he is just going for a checkup and also to get his nails trimmed, so nothing too dramatic, but we just need to get it done. 
So that's the first thing on the agenda and then once we've done that it's pretty much just a drop the rabbit back home for him to chill out for the afternoon and then we're heading over to Leeds to go out for a meal with Jay's family for his mum's birthday which was a couple of weeks ago and then also we might be going to play a game of crazy golf which I always enjoy though I am never good at it. So those are all of the things that we have on today but that means it's quite a whirlwind of a day not so much time for chilling out and reading though I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for that throughout the rest of the weekend especially given the fact that the weather as you might be able to tell from the fact that there is some light on my face but then the whole room around me looks so dark it is not a good weather weekend and in fact storm Eunice I think it's called has descended on the UK this weekend and it's looking like it's going to be pretty grim all weekend luckily here we don't have any like major severe weather warnings just yet it's just kind of going to be rainy drizzly windy but nothing too dramatic whereas other places have like red weather warnings and it sounds like it's going to be pretty hectic so for us just pretty gray drizzly and to be quite honest quite standard february weather so nothing new but it's always nice to have that rainy weekend excuse of staying in chilling out and hopefully doing lots of reading so that is the plan for the rest of the weekend but Friday is going to be quite busy so without further ado let's go and brave the weather which actually descended so quickly when we were out for coffee earlier it was sunny bright and kind of warm and now it looks miserable so let's go brave the weather but have fun doing it as always. uneventful rather disappointingly I feel like I'd hype myself up for some exciting weather and it was basically just very very cold quite rainy and then the wind was like on and off like it was quite intensely windy at some points of the day but then at other points of the day you'd have no idea it was supposed to be a storm but today's weather seems a lot calmer which I'm pleased about because I was supposed to wash my hair on Thursday evening but because of the storm and the fact that my hair is like a bit wavy curly and therefore very prone to being knotty um I don't like to waste a hair wash day when I know it's going to be windy the next day because then it will feel like the most pointless exercise ever anyone else who has even remotely curly hair will relate to me here but you don't really want to brush curly hair because then it just poofs out and looks a bit stupid so basically if it gets windy then you just have to start from scratch brush it and wash it again because it's ruined so I didn't wash my hair when I was supposed to on Thursday I left it yesterday just wore it up and then obviously I've got it up again this morning but I'm hoping that if it stays calm and not windy I'll actually be able to wash my hair and feel like a whole new person again which will be nice so it is now of course Saturday um, and I'm just waiting for my mum to come around to go out for coffee which I'm very excited about I basically live my life for coffee dates like coffee that someone else has made for you just hits different and I can't wait for that so that's exciting but other than that I've just spent some of this morning doing some more reading of Someday Someday Maybe which I'm really liking I only read like a few chapters just now but I'm now on page 153 so about halfway into the book and it's really fun it feels like a sitcom in like a 90s sitcom to be very specific in book format which is really refreshing because I don't read too many I guess like I don't really know then are there many fiction comedies that are like like solely comedies because there are like rom-coms which obviously have an element of humor to them but this book isn't really focused on romance at all it's all just about this girl's life and like figuring things out living in New York City trying to make it as an actress and it just feels very much like a sitcom 
which is very funny because Jay and I are currently watching Seinfeld for the very first time. We'd never watched it before and we started watching it in December and we're now in season nine, which is the last season. And you'll never guess who was in an episode that we just watched a couple of days ago. No one but Lauren Graham. So she was in Seinfeld, which is so funny because as I mentioned, this book has like an element of semi-autobiographicness to it, especially having listened to Lauren Graham's own memoir and knowing that her own story was quite similar to this as like a struggling actress and feeling like it was never gonna happen and then eventually things fell into place. And Seinfeld was out in the like 80s and 90s. So I feel like that element of her being a like a random extra or not an extra but like a one-time star in an episode of Seinfeld and not like a recurring character would have fallen into like this era of Franny's life where she is also just starting to get little breaks but not quite make it as like a fully fledged star yet and that's so fun so there are so many parallels there that I wasn't even expecting but it was fun to see lovely Lauren Graham in an episode of a show that we're watching and I'm really enjoying seeing this show unfold this isn't a show, this book unfold, though it feels like I'm watching a show. So really liking that and like I said, it just feels very refreshing because it's not a feeling I get from books very often. I don't often feel like books feel like sitcoms and I feel like that's quite unique so I'm really enjoying that one in this in this book. So there we go. Um, it's Saturday, going out for coffee. I'll catch up with you later. just say I may have accidentally willed worse weather into existence because um it was horrific outside it wasn't when we set off but when we were coming home it was sleety snowy rainy windy and um I would just like to extend my sincerest apologies to storm I can't remember what the name of the storm is but to the storm that's currently happening I'm sorry I doubted you because you have you've shown me who's boss Salutations to you my friend. It is now Sunday and as you can probably tell from my ultimate cosy hoodie, um, today is very much a chilling out day. I went to the gym this morning as I do every morning but aside from that it is a very rainy day. The storm has well and truly shown me who's boss. As you saw yesterday it was absolutely mental. So my mum came round, we went out for coffee, as we started walking home it started raining, then my mum set off to drive home and I obviously stayed here because this is where I live, um, and it started snowing, like really really heavily snowing, um, and it was setting on the ground and everything, proper crazy weather turn, it like literally came out of nowhere, and then in the afternoon and evening it then started raining which obviously washed all of the snow away, and then the rain is kind of what has stuck around for the remainder of the weekend, so it's just 
just very grey, very rainy um, and basically the ideal day to just stay at home and chill out. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Have done a little bit more reading of Someday, Someday, Maybe this morning and everything that I've said so far still stands. I'm really enjoying it. It's fun. I feel like the main character kind of feels a little bit like a female Joey Tribbiani, at least in the sense of like going out for all of these acting gigs, we're getting a lot of like um, discussions with agents and like audition situations and I feel like there's like an element of that to the book which just makes it really fun and lighthearted and relatable to read so I'm really really enjoying it and other than that the only other piece of exciting news I have to share with you all is that I've just pressed the schedule button on a video that is going out this afternoon and I can't wait for it to be out there in the world and because that will be out before this one I can talk about it in a little bit more depth so for anyone who hasn't seen the announcement video I will link it down below but me and my friend Sarah who a lot of you will see in lots of vlogs because she's here all the time are going to be hosting a classics read-along which we are calling let's get classical the a to z of classics read-along so as that title would suggest we are essentially reading a classic for every letter of the alphabet and the book either corresponds to the letter in terms of either the title of the book the name of the author, maybe a main character, and we've basically picked something to link the book to the letter of the alphabet and then we're going through and reading a book a month. There is a Discord, which again, I'll link down below, and there is also going to be live shows here every month. And I'm so excited about it because I love classics, but I also know that they can be really scary to read because there's a lot of pressure attached to them. And I think pressure to feel like you have to like them if you want to be a reader and I feel like classics, they don't need to be as scary as they are. And one way that I find to kind of get over that fear and also get over the imposter syndrome, I guess, of feeling like you don't know whether you're understanding things properly is to read as part of a group. So that is kind of the vibe that we're hoping to create here in a little like book club setting is basically to take the fear and stress and I guess like pressure out of reading classics and just make it fun. There are 26 books that we're gonna be reading together. We've got a real range of like full on proper classics, big books and also some shorter ones, modern classics, things that are a little bit less well known and we're both really excited about it and I hope some of you guys that are hoping to read a little bit more classics will be joining us and hopefully it will make that like experience a bit more fun because I do think reading is always more fun when you have people to discuss the books with. So that was kind of like the inspiration I suppose behind the read along and I think it's going to be just such a fun way to get reading together feel like we've got a little book club going on and just to be able to like share our opinions positive or negative on all of these books and just get out of our reading comfort zones so the announcement for that is going out this evening and I'm very excited about it because I hope other people will want to join in um, otherwise it'll just be me and Sarah reading classics for 26 months so if you want to join in you know where to find all of the details are in the description box um, and we've had a lot of fun naming all of the um like all of the connections between the books and the authors but I'll give you a little flavor of some of my favorites in case you haven't seen the announcement so for Jay we are doing Jumping for Joyce and we're reading a book by James Joyce another favorite of mine is for Elle which is Live Laugh Love with Little Women and for that we are of course reading Little Women by Louisa May Alcott and then M I realized that my favorite titles are all concentrated around that middle section of the alphabet but M is Mastering the Margarita and we're reading The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov so we've had a lot of fun naming all these titles and I hope that kind of like brings across the attitude that we're bringing to this read-along which is to make classics fun essentially so there we go I'm very excited to be able to talk about this with you guys because I have been planning something like this for quite a while now and I'm so excited it's like out there in the world so yeah that is me I'm now just finished like scheduling that and getting it live so now I can get back to some more reading make a cup of tea and chill out for the rest of my Sunday
Monday has rolled around quickly as it always tends to do which means it's the start of a new work week. Unfortunately I'm actually feeling a little bit under the weather today, not really sure what's going on, just not quite feeling at the top of my game which is not ideal but we move. I thought I would give you a start of the week weather update seeing as that's what this vlog has been about because I think as you can probably tell it's quite a bright day today the sun is shining and the storm seems to have passed but we're not over the worst of the effects yet because the fact that there's been a storm for the last few days means that there is now flooding going on so where I live in the middle of York we have two rivers going through the city there is the river ooze and the river foss and the ooze kind of comes from like way up in the Yorkshire Dales I think and I think they've had even more dramatic weather than us so as that has kind of traveled downstream the river has just gotten higher and higher and higher and now it's got nowhere else to go but out so like driving to the gym this morning we could see like there was just like where there is normally the river path is completely covered in water um, and it just seems to be getting higher and higher which is kind of crazy and so when I look out of my office I can normally see like a car park which is near the river and that car park is now water <laughs> there is no cars just water and it's really crazy we've never lived anywhere with um like flood risk before like when we lived in Leeds we weren't really near any major sources of water so we knew this could happen living in York because of the fact that there is a big river going through the city but I've never seen it like up close and personal before so that is kind of crazy. I don't think it's going to get any higher though from what I saw online it was going to get to its peak today and then hopefully go down but what a roller coaster this weekend's weather has been like really it's taken me in every direction and it's certainly kept me on my toes so just thought it was only right to conclude that little weather update for you guys seeing as I've pulled you along on the whole journey and aside from that this morning before starting work I did manage to finish off my read of Someday Someday Maybe by Lauren Graham and I've ended up giving this one four stars. I really really enjoyed it because of the fact that I felt it was a very fresh and unique book. It wasn't fresh and unique in the sense that it did anything that has never been done before but like I said it brought a feeling of like a TV sitcom into a novel and that's just something I've never personally experienced experienced in a book before and I thought it was really fun. It was uplifting and motivational but also had grit and relatability. You were really rooting for the main character and just like wanted her to succeed but you could also feel the fact that it wasn't just going to be like a storybook kind of like a surefire route to success you knew she was going to kind of have to work for it and I think that made it easier to get invested in and whilst there was elements of romance and friendships and all of those kinds of things in there at its heart it was like a story of like the underdog making their way up and I personally really enjoyed that and was very very invested in it. I'm also kind of keen to listen to the audiobook maybe at some point if I want to reread because I just checked and on Audible it is actually narrated by Lauren Graham and she just has like such a fun voice and I feel like would bring a lot of character to the book as well especially given that I kind of feel like the main character is Lauren Graham anyway. So there we have it. I finished a book and it definitely did what I wanted it to do which was to pull me out of a little bit of a reading slump. So thank you very much Lauren Graham. You have saved me once again. So there we go. That I think as we're starting a new work week will bring me to the end of this reading vlog and it has been a roller coaster in every aspect from pot roast and all of that kind of grief at the beginning of the vlog to potato milk and even a Gilmore Girls themed book so there we go we've had it all thank you so much for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the vlog I'll see you next time mm -hmm.